Hi, I'm Reese Witherspoon from Little Fires Everywhere. Hi, I'm Megan Stott. And I'm Jade Pettyjohn. Hey, I'm Gavin Lewis. Hi, I'm Lexi Underwood. Hi, I'm Jordan Nelsass from Little Fires Everywhere. And I'm Carrie Washington, also from Little Fires Everywhere. And we are here to play BuzzFeed's First Times. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna start lying now. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, everything I'm about to say is a lie. <laughs> When I first met you in person, I was like, who is that girl? <laughs> She's so smart. When I first met you in person, I was like, oh my god, I know who that girl is. <laughs> <laughs> That's Reese Witherspoon. But then I got to know Carrie, and our relationship has grown and become richer and mm. deeper through Time's Up, mm -hmm. and really sharing ideas about how we want to see safety in the workplace. Mm -hmm. and, and also just being yeah. kind of in each other's tribe and mm -hmm. sharing what it's like to start a production company, what right. it's like to be a working mom, what it's like to balance your marriage while you're right. a working actor. It's really cool for me to see you step into a leadership position that you mm. so deserve and that you really feel excited about it. Oh, I love that. Thank you. She's an amazing partner. I told you that I was leader. lying about all Yeah, oh, oh. No, I'm see, she's such a good actor. <laughs> yeah, on my call back, that's when I met Jade. And yeah. we read together. And when I first met her, I was like, wow, she's really professional. And then I got on set with her, I'm like, oh, Oh wow, she's really funny. Aww. Never mind, she's not just professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought you were just really bright. Like the the second I met you in the audition, you were just. I mean, your character is very moody and yeah. very. You and know, I was wearing like Doc Martens. I wore the same outfit for every single audition. I wore Doc Martens. Yeah. And they were red, and then a red T-shirt, and every single time, and then I would come in, I'd be like, I'm tough. No, you, you were tough. And I was like, you're professional. Yeah. And then I looked you up, and I was like. Oh my gosh, she has so many followers. So Look at her photo. I literally like went through your Instagram and I was like, ooh, that's cute. And I oh tried so hard not to like them, but I probably liked like four of them. And I was like, ooh, that's cute. And I went through like, <laughs> I went back. I go back. It, I did a bit of Instagram stalking. You know what? I did the percent. same on you though. Yeah. You gotta admit it. We it's, all Instagram It stalk. happens because you're like, what do I have in common with this person? What can I talk to them about? <laughs> you gotta know. Yeah. That's how it works. Um, I hated everybody. Uh, Fair. You know, still do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was chemistry already there um, between all of us, I think. You know, everybody's just so talented. Like our first table read, I was like, immediately blown away but also like when we were all auditioning together mm -hmm. like I just remember like the first time that I met Gavin and did the Moody and Pearl scene with you I was just like this kid is amazing <laughs> I'm an only child so these people are like my siblings now I don't want to just return a compliment but everyone was incredibly talented I think we lucked out I will say that Reese and I met at a kind of workshopping meeting, reading of a script oh, yeah. at Leonardo DiCaprio's house. That's right. Just a little name drop. And it was for a movie that eventually went, but neither of us was in it. No. <laughs> neither was Leo. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know what, one thing that is public and it came out last yeah. year, I auditioned so hard for Clueless and I didn't get it. Really? I auditioned so hard for it and I- I did too. Did you? I did. <sighs> That would have been a different. We should do like we could do like we a, do like whole a remake, recreate like, a yes. scene. Yes, with clues. us. That would be so fun. <laughs> I know. I was in an airport once, and I yet met this comedian Yakov Smirnov, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my God, this guy is so famous! I can't believe he's on the same plane as me." <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I was at like toddler age. I want to say maybe around three. My parents brought me, my very cool parents, brought me to a Peaches and Herb concert. Whoa. Wow. And um, as they were walking down the aisle <laughs> singing, they like touched my hand because there was a baby in the audience. That was my first brush with greatness. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on set. That was the first time oh, I've really? ever met anybody who was famous, like Reese and yeah. Carrie and all of them. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is so cool. I'd never met anybody. Meeting was, Reese was so cool. Oh my gosh, it I was think, so cool. I think the first celebrity I ever met was actually the voice of Bart Simpson, <gasps> Nancy Cartwright. She introduced herself in the Bart Simpson voice and I was like, what? This is incredible. <laughs> it made my, my like six-year-old dreams come true. Oh, that is adorable. <laughs> uh, I think the first celebrity I ever met would have been all three of the Jonas Brothers. It would have started with Nick because I won a contest because I was diabetic and I had a nonprofit organization that I was, I was trying to save the oceans when I was little and that's actually something I want to get back to. And he sort of inspired me because I was diabetic. That was when I was newly diagnosed. 
and he sort of inspired me for uh, living well with diabetes. And I think he was actually part of the inspiration to start acting. So yeah, that was that was pretty it was a pretty impressionable first celebrity meeting. I worked on a feature film that um, was like direct to DVD when I was like 14, and Tom Arnold like played the villain in it and I met him and I was just like, well, it's Tom Arnold. And I remember he was only there for one day and he just came in and he was like super professional, super nice. And then he was gone. Never saw this guy ever again. He was like in and out, hi, I'm Tom Arnold, nice to meet you, just dips. Probably Megan Good. I remember it was like my first time in LA and I was about like nine years old and my mom and I, we were at Roscoe's. At the time, what was it, Jumping the Broom was like my favorite movie to watch on TV. So I was so excited to meet her and actually flash forward to summer of 2018 I actually just played her daughter in an indie film so it was crazy how it like all came full circle but I was so excited to meet her you know I just remember it was such a big deal to be talking so openly about the inner lives of women and their friendships but also about domestic violence mm. and portraying that in the real raw emotional way that it was mm -hmm. Nicole Kidman's performance is incredible Brilliant. Um, so there was a lot of emotional response to that but also enjoying Laura Dern's comedic yes. talent. Yes, all of you. The, the <laughs> magic of that ensemble. It was a really fun group of women. I don't think we ever expected it to be as um, culturally a touchstone as people mm. enjoyed it. So thank you for watching. I think that would be my same reaction too, is just a big thank you. Like everybody kept telling us before Scandal aired what a risk it was for a black woman to be the lead of a network drama that it hadn't happened in 40 years. So there was kind of a, a sense or a questioning, like will people too tune in, will people watch? So when people did show up, we were just so grateful. We were so happy that people were willing to show up for our heroes to look like more than just one thing. Something along the lines of, there was so much juice and mystery to yeah, it. Yeah, when like I first read the book, I was like, wow. Ah. This is very interesting. I was kind of like, ooh, cool. I wonder what they're gonna do with the script. And then I read the script and I was like, wow. Pun intended, it was very fiery. The book was really emotional for me. It really explored motherhood in a way that I hadn't had some of those descriptions in it. And also this idea that sometimes other women mother you. Mm. I've had many different women in my life who have become mothers to, to me and helped me through times that my own mother didn't have experience with or wasn't there standing next to me. I really really identified with that part of it. It was just a very profound experience because I do think that we tend to think of mothers in very binary terms. There's good mothers and bad mothers, you know, and, and not to really dive into the beautiful complexity of what it means to be a mother, the unique challenges and rewards. We had a beautiful room of writers who worked so fantastically together, but we were really weighing in on scripts and helping those scripts evolve and giving the writers room to be as brilliant as they were. And we got to be sort of 90s consultants because yes. we were teenagers in the 90s. Yeah. We were like, mm, that's not a thing, but slim, fast, wide. <laughs> and we both were rollerblading. Rollerblades, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, read it, I read it during the audition process and I really, really liked the book. And yeah, I, I was just super excited to, to bring the character to life that no one had ever brought to life before. My first time reading the book was actually also during the audition process. Couldn't put it down. And that was the same thing with the scripts. You know, as soon as we got, I got like all eight scripts at once and I just like binge read all the scripts. I read the book after because I sort of wanted to, because I knew there were some discrepancies. And then I read the book after and I was just like, wow, they're both amazing. <laughs> oh, I know. I was on Jeopardy. Was I on Jeopardy? Like no, you I were a question on Jeopardy? I was, no, I was on um, Wheel of Fortune. You were? They said my whole, even the Witherspoon, the hard, long part was on it. That, the answer was <laughs> The answer Reese was Reese Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Yeah, I was like, <gasps> okay, this is it. I have arrived. Yeah. Wow. Also, you know, like the very first time I was in TV Guide. Yeah, oh yeah. Remember how important it was when you- Huge. My grandma called me and she was like, you're in TV Guide. The first time I realized I was famous, I was walking on the street in New York in Chelsea. I was on 23rd Street and somebody said, Carrie. And I was like, hi, and I gave them a hug. And then I stepped back and I was like trying to place them. And they were like, I loved you in Save the Last Dance. And I was like, oh my God, I just gave a hug to a complete stranger. <laughs> I don't know this person at all. I was like, I should probably have different boundaries now. But you didn't. No. No, you still hug strangers. I still hug strangers. <laughs> 
Legally Blonde. The first one I saw was Man on the Moon, I think. <gasps> oh! Yeah. Yeah, Reese that was her Spoon. first film. Yeah, that, that movie that made movie me was cry amazing. my eyes out. And then I watched Legally Blonde and I was like, oh, I like her. Yeah. Did you ever quote? Legally blonde, so we're on set at all, or? Well, I tried to make it really nonchalant. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but I, I said, like, what? Like, it's hard, but I'm pretty sure she, she noticed. noticed. I was like, you're doing Legally Blonde right now. <laughs> I think it would have been Legally Blonde. It was a good first impression of Reese. I was obsessed with Legally Blonde. I just love Reese Witherspoon. She's an <laughs> incredible person, and yeah. she's even more incredible as Elwood. Probably Walk the Line, because I'm a big Joaquin fan. Like, she did so good. It. it was dope. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is a good question because I do think women need to talk about money mm -hmm. more often and our successes, mm -hmm. not just our devastations. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the first time I was able to afford a rental house that had air conditioning <laughs> was such a, a huge, huge moment. Huge deal. Because LA was really hot and I couldn't, and I'd mm. lived in a lot of little places that had no air conditioning and I was just sweating, y'all. It's a huge deal. And then the first time I ever bought a house. Oh, and, and that was a huge moment in my life and I feel really proud of that accomplishment. Mm. When I did Save the Last Dance, they were still giving per diem in cash. Mm -hmm. I was living in Chicago, it was my first studio film, and they handed me an envelope full of cash, where I come from. <laughs> if somebody hands you an envelope full of cash, you're doing something illegal. So I was like, what is this? And um, they explained it to me, and I proceeded to hide that weekly cash under my mattress. And at the end of Save the Last Dance, I bought my first laptop, because mm. I had saved my per diem throughout the film. That's so cool. And I was like, I have to remember to do this. I have to mm -hmm. remember to keep paying myself first. Right. Lots of tears. <laughs> I got the call and I think I think you said that this happened to you too, where mm. my my team was like, So we have some news for you. You know, we're really sorry, Megan, but you booked Little Fires. Yeah. And I literally I started crying when they were like, We have bad news for you and I started crying. I was like, Okay, I didn't get this. This was like my dream job. And then they told me I got it and I started screaming. It was the best moment of all time. I love it. <laughs> me too, me too. I was screaming and crying. I was jumping up and down. I'm sure my neighbors were probably like super annoyed with me, but it's fine. It was a fantastic moment. And now we're here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a friend over when I first found out and I was crazy excited and she sort of celebrated with me and it was good. It was a really good moment. <laughs> I, was, I was very, very excited. I I cried. I burst into tears, ran upstairs to my pops, and I just like was like, I got it. And he's like, oh my god, I got it. And I was like, yeah. And I just like started crying. And uh, I was so, so excited. Like I can't even describe the feeling. This is incredible. The first premiere of a movie I was in was called The Man in the Moon, and I was 14 years old. And I went down to La Brea to a vintage store and I bought myself <laughs> a little vintage dress, and then I wore my cowboy boots with it because I thought that was cute. I thought it was really cool that Arnold Schwarzenegger came to the premiere. I have no idea still to this day why. Why? Why? I, I, I used to go to Cannes often because I worked with a company that has a big mm. presence there. Mm -hmm. And I had previously been at a photo shoot for People magazine where I had worn a dress by a little known designer named Jason Wu. Mm. Um, and I loved the dress and I asked him if he could make it for me in green. And so I was the first person to wear Jason Wu internationally on an international carpet. And I wore this gorgeous green gown that he made for me in Cannes. And I'll never forget it because it was the beginning of our friendship and, of course, his meteoric rise to fame. You wear clothes so beautifully. Oh, I love watching kind. you on the red carpet. Isn't she the best <laughs> on the red carpet? I love a dress. I love you, a moment, a red carpet moment. You really go there with style and it's really fun to watch. I try to think of it as like performance art. Yeah. I think it's, it's these moments to create magic with a team of other artisans coming yeah. together. Yeah. It's really cool. Otherwise I wouldn't get through it. I have to make it something like creative and silly. Otherwise I'd be like, no. <laughs>